why YouTube is high on Batman, 60 books in isolation, and a non-family Johnson, published in 2015, called Afternoon Tea at the Sunflower Cafe. Okay, so, let me read the blurb. The coin discovers that Jimmy Garman, a husband of more than 20 years, is planning to leave her for his office junior. Her world is turned upside down. Determined to salvage her prize, he resolves to get her own back. Along with Della, Jimmy's right-hand woman at his cleaner firm, Diamond Shine, and the cleaners who meet her at the Sun Sunflower Cafe, she make him wish he had never underestimated her. Then Connie meets a charming Brandon Log, her master chocolatier, which kind of starts to melt her soul. The ladies of the Sunflower Cafe help Connie scrub away the hurt, and can Brandon make her trust again? Right, okay. Where tea, cake and friendship can heal a broken heart, the Sunflower Cafe. Okay, now this one is interesting from my point of view because I'm working class. Um, I and I, I was a cleaner. I was a cleaner in my previous life. Um, with <laughs> my previous life. I was a cleaner years ago and I was at university, okay? This kind of, it, my, my student loan didn't, and it only went so far. I had to actually work 40 hours a week to make it work. And I was a cleaner at the Royal Hampshire County Hospital, okay? So I understand the world of the cleaners really, really well. <laughs> I do remember it. And to be honest, I actually did get a lot of respect. I used to, I did it all from maternity to mortuary. I would work anywhere with no complaints. And I actually enjoyed my time there. I worked my ass off, I've got to admit. And, you know, my job is to basically make, you know, make it clean and keep MRSA levels down. And I did that, which you wouldn't believe. So, this is a world of obviously the working classes. And the thing is, okay, Jimmy, Jimmy seems to have a case, this kind of like high profileness. He, he kind of like. People seem to like fawn over him. People love him. He has multiple affairs. You seem to be thinking he runs a cleaning company. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. And the thing is, what's interesting is that Connie and D uh, Delia, Delia's always basically hated Connie until this moment, okay? This bit here. Right. This bit here. This is from Della's point of view. So it's Della, Delia, Della. She keeps using the holidays for Jimmy to do his cozying up in. She feel jolt of guilt about doing it either. In fact, what she admitted, she felt a hint of glee. They did disrespecting his wife so much. They convinced her that there was no connection between them, that the marriage was hanging on by a thread, and that one day that thread would finally break and he would come to her, his soulmate. The woman who knew everything about him and accepted him and adored him. Della felt threatened by Jimmy's flings. They didn't go into detail about them. Of little hints he dropped, Della knew they were a scratch to itch because he wasn't getting it at home. But Della was glad about because she was widely jealous of Connie Diamond's position as a woman who had his name. Yeah, basically, so Della's jealous of Connie. So Connie has basically been mentally abused um, her entire life by this man. He's had multiple affairs who got married Connie uh, and while she was pregnant with their son, who sadly was a stillbirth. And whilst that was happening, Jimmy was in bed with her, um, Connie's best friend. They later on had a daughter, but Jimmy doesn't really cared about his own child, okay? And yeah, everyone, everyone seems to kind of like fawn over Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy Diamond. And I don't know why. I don't know why, okay? And to be honest, I, it, it, this book has a lots lots of characters, characters of cleaners. And it does have, and I hate, basically it has a cleaner who is stealing from the customers, okay? Who basically says, Why don't you do anything, okay? Or oh, I send Al Jock over, okay? She plays, and I was like thinking, okay, because she's Scottish and her husband called Jock and he's big and burly, okay? He's he's gonna be a criminal, start threatening people. Do you kind of get the kind of like class stereotypes going on here? There's a lot of class stereotypes, there felt a lot of class stereotypes going on, okay? I mean, the only time I didn't feel it was stereotypical, okay, where this woman who Jimmy's having an affair with, because it's Lent, she is staying some sex. And I was like, okay, I kind of respect that, you know, you know. So this book does really kind of go along with class stereotypes, which I didn't particularly like, and I do hate that. I've seen it for myself, okay? I'm working class, okay? I was born working class, to working class parents. I worked my way through university, okay, both times. For my first time, I worked 40 hours a week. My second time, I worked as well as did my degree, okay, to deal with... But it's just there, this is the working class stereotypes, okay, that we can't, we can't pronounce a sentence, okay? We, we can't pronounce our vowels. We all live in council estates, okay? You know the stereotype, okay? We don't, we don't have jobs. I do, by the way, I do actually have a job, and I do actually love my job, even with the pandemic going on. So, 
yeah this book goes along a bit with stereotypes and this bit here okay this is cheryl cheryl who i personally believe is in the worst place okay then then and, and um uh, connie there you go this is cheryl's point of view she didn't plan her life to be like this and it scared her that she could be past this present depression material things had never been top of her wish list but her family was she wanted a child to love her so much a child to bring her up in the sort of family she'd always wanted for herself Mum and Dad, a big strong unit, a warm house, not necessarily big but clean and comfortable. Plenty of food in the cupboards and lots of love. She and Gary, her husband, had been given two chances at IVF at the, on the NHS but had failed. And now it was down to them to fund it. And she'd worked her ass off for IVF and then her husband spent the money. Because her husband obviously, okay, being a working class stereotype, okay, is into gambling. Um... Treats her like crap, okay. Which, okay, a lot of a lot of men, men would already do in many Johnson novels, and hooks up with someone else, okay. Wins money on a scratch card, but loses it because men can't be trusted with money. And it's it's that it's that kind of storyline going on. But Cheryl, I found her be better written because you want more for her the way she's described than than um, Connie and Adela, okay. Because Cheryl's this kind of character okay, gets blamed for everything. Whilst Connie and Della are putting their plans together okay, to basically steal Jimmy's business. And this is where I think also the title falls down as well. Is that she introduces a company that's called Lady Muck, okay? Which is quite a clever title, okay, for a you know, a female owned cleaner company, Lady Muck. It's actually quite a clever little pun going on there. Okay, and also because a pun on Connie because so Della thought Connie was living the life of Riley in luxury when she was in a house that was crumbling. Okay, living like Lady Muck. So you'd think the title of this book would be called Lady Muck. Okay, so afternoon tea at a sunflower cafe. Because I think the cafe would basically all the cleaning women get together occasionally, okay, to you know, eat scones and quad cream and nice food. Now if there is a bit of food porn going on the way it's described. With how with um I thought the book would be called Lady Muck. But it wasn't, and that kind of is a shame because I thought it'd be a bit more of a, a bit more of a to the point title. Okay, this is this example. Okay, talk here quickly about Cheryl how she's getting a um. This bit here. Okay, this is when her mother-in-law, um, Gary's um mother, I'm gonna go at him. Have I'm gonna go at her. I sure as water is wet, you're bad luck for my lad, Cheryl Parker. We want to know that now. It's over. So stop making yourself look daft trying to bother him. I'm not trying to bother him honestly. I wanted tears like spring to Cheryl's eyes at the unfairness of it all. Like I she was the object of such a vitriol when it had been Gary who made it impossible for them to stay together. I still care about him. I mean bitch, she couldn't hold the sobs back. They bubbled and hiccuped out of her and the force of them set her shoulders shaking. Off Cheryl, get a grip of yourself. You're being pathetic, snap and gladstone. But a shred of sympathy as she pushed the door shut in Cheryl's face. Do you see what I mean? Okay? Do you see what I mean, okay, buddy? You know, I'll oh, get a quick show, you're being pathetic. You know, everyone's against Cheryl. Until, until, okay. Now this is when the fairy tale comes in. This is like a working class fairy tale. And this this is the thing as well, is it'll kind of guess the show's kind of like well, what's like for the working class of trying to escape the situation or move up in the world. But the thing is that you have Connie and Della basically doing what they can <coughs> sorry, to sabotage Jimmy's business. They can take it all for themselves. So basically leave Jimmy in the gutter, which he's left him over the years. He's basically gets eyes on them both. He's pushed them way too far and that's kind of justified. But the thing is, with people like Cheryl, she doesn't get out of a situation by by working, working, working and maybe building her own company. She gets it by a fairy godmother who called Edith, whose house she cleans, and Edith dies and leaves her all her paintings. He's left well, she's originally left a cottage, okay, that Edith lived in that she absolutely loved. But then her oldest nephew stole it from her. And then oldest nephew basically says to find and keep the paintings. And it turns out that the house, the cottage falls apart, it collapses, okay? And these paintings I'm reading a book here. After Mr. Watson, oh, he's a solicitor, had gone home, Shell sat on the sofa, the owner at her side, the piles of Edith's paintings 
on the floor next to her and she felt totally and utterly hollowed out. Dear dear Edith, who I believe she really did own one of Van Gogh's sunflowers. She can see it now, pointing her up at the study wall where the painting hung, then had to remember that was the most important of all her pieces. Joel's eyes brimmed with teardrops. She couldn't bear it that she would never see the wonderful sparkly old lady again. And that she would never know what happened to her because she certainly didn't believe that she fell off a ladder and down the stairs. Neither would she live in the cottage that Edith had promised her. So. Yeah. And basically, yeah. So. But the thing is, these paintings turn out to be real. They're all Van Gogh's. So now Cheryl's got money. To do what it want. Have our IVF. Live Bella. Okay, she has a little fairy good mother coming in. But this is also a book which kind of ties in with, and this is a lot with me, Johnson's books, when it comes to women and weight. Now, at the time of the book, Della is overweight. Sorry, not Della. Connie is overweight. Okay, basically she's a comfort eater. She needs some help. And only when she starts losing weight, her life gets, her life gets better. This is tied into a lot, the majority of fiction, okay? If you're slightly overweight, a stern or two overweight, if you're absolutely huge, all your problems will be sorted in life if you lose weight. Now, if you lose weight, fantastic. I lose a few pounds myself. All your problems are sorted. No, no, they're not. But the thing is, in this book, Connie's storyline is tied in with weight. She loses weight. She becomes more confident, which is true. But then she meets the chocolatier, Jean Locke, okay, who tries to tempt her all the time, okay, with sweets, but she turns her down because she's losing weight. And then John basically heals her heart and makes her laugh again and at the time she's cleaning his house because even though she's only a company lady amongst she's still also a cleaner as well under an assumed name Marilyn she turns down chocolate she becomes healthier and she just becomes better because she's lost weight okay so yeah, it was Brandon Locke not John Locke that's sorry that's from lost John Locke Brandon Locke here you go the blue brocade had a softness to the room which she had chosen the material himself and they had excellent taste, but she knew that already. The house was grand and without being pretentious, its primary aim was comfort and easy living, uh, being pleasurable to the eye. She imagined Brandon slobbing on a huge sofa at night, a glass of red wine and dish Doritos on a small table by the side of him. He liked to read, she knew because there was books were pack parked all over the house. Because he always loved books, in the house she lived in next, she would have a huge antique bookcase full of them. The stranger thinks she had a secret, they had a secret life setting up a rival business behind her husband's back. Pleading for clients why he thought she was at home polishing the microwave for the upkeep time, washing his socks. He never had a clue that she was aware of nearly everything he was doing and planning. She wouldn't have been surprised if he'd already written his leaving speech to her about how he'd hurt the safe friends and would be more than financially generous with her and would sign over the house to her. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yes, it's that kind of book. It's that kind of book. So the book basically ends with um, Jimmy slinking off into the darkness, Shell becoming filthy, filthy rich, owning Van Gogh's, Van Gogh's, and uh, yeah, it's one of these books where everyone gets the happy ending. But from a class point of view, it just felt at various times like it has been on stereotypes. Okay. And no one wanted more for themselves or had dreams above their aspirations. And at times it did kind of be on parody. And the whole kind of idea of weight tied, in, tied into your happiness when it should be more tied into your health. And it also has an ending that totally comes out of nowhere regarding this secret mystery house kit no one wants to clean. Which comes out of nowhere too. Which feels kind of really tacked on. And... It was good, but from a class point of view, it felt very stereotypical. So I'm signing off, everyone. Take care. Bye now.